Section 8.6 is about conic sections. If you remember the beginning of the chapter 8, we had this picture up there, which shows you that if you have a double cone and you slice it with a plane, you can create these four um, shapes, the parabola, a circle, an ellipse, or a hyperbola. And we've spent the last four sections looking at each one of those individually. Now here you see a general quadratic equation. If you have an equation of this form and you complete the square, you then can look and figure out which of the conic sections you have because it's going to match, your equation is going to match one of these four. In this example we have a quadratic equation and if we write it in standard form we should be able to tell if it's a parabola, circle, ellipse, or hyperbola and then that should allow us to graph it. So I'm going to rewrite this by grouping the squared, the x squared and the 6x together because I'm going to complete the square on that. And then I notice that there's a, a y, a y squared, but there's no other y's. So I'm going to leave that here for now, and then I'm going to move the 7 over. Now because there's nothing else with this y, I notice that 4y squared is a perfect square. There just is no other um, constant term at the end to make it a, a binomial. So I could treat this as 4 times the perfect square y squared. So now I'm going to go to the left side here and find or complete the square by taking half of b and squaring it. So I'll add 9 to both sides and then I'm going to rewrite this. This factors to x minus 3 squared plus 4 and we'll just say y squared and that's going to equal 16. Now this looks like it might be a circle because this doesn't equal 1 but this 4 in front of the y squared is begging to be divided. So if I divide everything by 16, I'm going to eliminate the 4 that's here. So I end up with x minus 3 squared over 16, and then I am have the y squared. I'm going to cancel that, leaving a 4 on the bottom, and then that's going to equal 1. So now I have no coefficients in front of my squares, which is what I want, and now I can go back and see which one equals 1 and has a plus sign. So I know that um, this equation that I'm working on is going to form an ellipse. Now my ellipse is going to have its center at hk, and in this case my h is 3 and my k is 0. So I'm going to put a dot here on 3, 0 as the center of my ellipse. I know because my a squared is 16 that my a is 4, so my major axis is 4 units to the right and left. And I know it's the major axis of x is because the x term is in front. And then my b squared is 4, which means my b is 2. So I know my minor axis is going to be 2, and I can sketch my ellipse that way. Now in this slide, we see that there's another way to find out what kind of a conic section you have without writing it in standard form. If you have a general quadratic like this, and it says where the b equals 0, most of the ones, in fact, all of the examples that we see won't include this b term. Now it has to be there because technically you could get it, but we're not going to be exploring that kind of example at all. So if you have a quadratic that actually looks like this, all you have to do is look at the A and the C, and based on this summary here, you can tell what kind of conic section you have. If the A or the C is zero, not both of them, but if one of them, then you know it's going to be a parabola. If the A equals the C, you know it's going to be a circle. If the a and the c have the same sign but are not equal, it'll be an ellipse. And if the a and c have opposite signs, it'll be a hyperbola. So here we're asked to find out which conic section we have without writing the equation in standard form. So I'm going to put up here the quadratic that we had on the last slide and remind you that this b is not something that we're going to deal with. So our quadratics will have this kind of look to them. So the a is what's in front of the x squared term, and the c is what's in front of the y squared term. So in this one, my capital A is 1, and my capital C is negative 2. So if we go back to our concept summary, a and c are not equal. Um, do they have the same sign? No, they have opposite signs. So a and c have opposite signs, one positive, one negative, so we know this is going to be a hyperbola. In B, we see our A is 4, and our C is 4. 
So if we go back to the concept summary, A equals C, we know that this equation is the equation of a circle. And in C, my A is 0, because I don't have an x squared term, and my C is 1. So back here, if A is 0 or C is 0, but not both, so we know that this third one is a parabola.